Hey folks, welcome to ADSR. I'm Stephen Ellistad. Make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel and follow on social media. One of the biggest new features of the Machine 2.6 update is the ability to control external hardware directly from machine. An external MIDI control is now implemented through the existing macros workflow. In other words, once we've set up the routing, we can control our MIDI CCs as parameters in the macro slots. And there are a number of control templates included in the update, and they're added to the machine library as factory content upgrades. Now I have them loaded as user preferences because I have not yet received the official update. This is an advanced copy, but we're just going to go into browse. In your case, it will not be user and we'll be able to choose particular groups. We're doing it in the software here. We can come into groups and this is for external instruments that have multiple sounds, say a drum machine or what have you. We can choose say Volca beats or a Volca sample, uh, circuit drums, what have you. We're going to look at sounds. So we can access not only individual sounds of elements that have kits, say a snare from a TR-8 from a Volca Beats. We can also look at the dedicated external ones. And so here I have, say, the Volca FM or, or the Minotaur, the Minilog. And so what I have here is a Meblip triode, a really cool open source uh, analog synth. I just ordered the triode for this tutorial, and I'm really quite impressed with the flexibility of this little box. It's a really cool little mono synth. It does some great bass tones. Very cool stuff, so check them out at meblip.com. Not only can we adjust things on the synthesizer itself, there's actually more MIDI controllable parameters than are available on the knobs. So this is a great example to demonstrate these functions. And so presets for many common synths are available here as both groups and sounds. And if you want to build your own template, it's a very simple matter of just knowing the CC assignments or the MIDI implementation for your particular hardware. So for example, here's a look at the implementation sheet for the Meblip triode. This is just a copy of the PDF that came with the hardware. And every piece of hardware should have an implementation chart available to it. So today I want to show you how to load a template by selecting here, and it's loaded in that sound slot, and then show you how to control an external synth. So to load this up, we have to do a couple of things. First thing we have to do is control it from the macros section and call that up, which we've done. So when I come into macros, now I can see my configurations are right here up top. But that doesn't really do me any good because I have to route the MIDI and the audio. So currently I've got it going out of MIDI port 1 in my machine studio. And then I've had to call up my output routings. So first for MIDI, I need to make sure output, I have port 1 selected. If I have more than one device, maybe port 2, port 3, etc. And then on audio, I need to make sure that my hardware inputs are coming back in. So I've got machine 1 left and right coming on input 1 and 2. Now you're typically be using your own interface. Because of the nature of recording the tutorial, I have multiple sources, so I've had to create an aggregate I.O. device, which is a function of Mac Core Audio. But typically, you can just load up your normal interface and make sure that your input is set to 1 and 2 or 3 and 4, whatever channel here that you want to bring it into. So we've got those wired up correctly. Now I need to make sure that my output on MIDI is going to that same port and on that proper channel. I've already selected this to come in on channel 1, but if you have multiple pieces of hardware, you're going to probably select different MIDI channels. And so now when I hit that, we can hear the audio coming in, and we can see how it's coming in on the device itself. And so now I can control the hardware, of course. Do all kinds of cool things there. As long as we can hit macro and see our macros page, we've got that element of control. And so now we can see the parameters that are available to us on each page. But now we can come over here and adjust anything, say our cutoff. Resonance, accent, envelope mod, attack. Go to the next page and say to get our LFO, an envelope uh, modification. Here's our pulse width and PWM pulse width mod sweep. Go to 
sub oscillator on or what have you. So we can see that it's pretty simple to actually come over here and make these adjustments. And we can use this to send mode information, CCs, uh, PCs or program changes, as well as pitch bend information. Not all controls are necessarily mapped. And some hardware, like the MiiBlip, has MIDI controls that aren't actually available on the hardware. So again, it's worth checking the MIDI implementation chart for your particular piece of hardware. Now that we've got this control directly from the macros of software, we can use things like note repeat. Or go to pad mode and adjust, say, our octaves. Or adjust it by semitone as to which keys are mapped to the sound of the external hardware. So lots of real fun stuff we can do there. Before we sign off here, I want to refresh the connections. So I've just connected the MIDI hardware using a 5-pin DIN from the Machine Studio to the triode using it's an old-school MIDI cable. And the studio has several MIDI out channels, so I need to specify which ports are active in my preferences. And so that's just over here. Currently, I have port 1 selected. And now I've connected the synth audio out using this cable into channels 1 and 2 input on my audio interface. And then I've got that level coming back into the machine because I've also specified that here in the audio section. You see it's on input 1 and 2. So I recommend getting a good solid input level out of the synth. I've actually got it maxed here. And then adjust the gain at your audio interface. And then we can fine tune it once we've got that tone coming in using the input control. So this is just to monitor. We're not actually recording that audio unless we go through either a sampling workflow or record it to our DAW or what have you. We do need to specify the audio inputs for machine to bring the external synth audio back into the system. So right now the synth is just being recorded in my screen capture software, but you could bring it into that audio track in your DAW or just sample it in the machine. So it's very flexible how you approach it. This is a pretty powerful tool and the macro has let us collect the key parameters of our sound or group into our own custom panel sets. We can just create a new one. For example, if I wanted to come over here, I could macro, I could add a page. This would be for a different piece of hardware. I select MIDI or CC bank select or choose a program change or what have you. And then I can give it a name and save that set. And so what's happening is once we send it to the synth, we use that selected CC macro, is sent to the sound's MIDI output destination channel. So again, we need to make sure that we're on the proper port and the proper channel. And don't be afraid to make adjustments or make changes to better suit your workflow, but just make sure that you save as a group if you're doing a custom one and not as a project. So that machine keeps your routing intact and you can transfer it from project to project by loading that group. I'm Stephen Ellisdead for ADSR. Make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel and follow on social media. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.